Hey everybody, so for the third and final video about my game Ghost Ship Panic, I want to tell you how I managed the difficulty curve on the game. If you watched the previous videos, we already talked about how to make a title screen and how to make an in-game shop. If you haven't watched those videos, I'll leave the link in the description. Now, for the final video, let's see how the game deals with difficulty. Ghost Ship Panic is a single screen arcade infinite experience, which means with every playthrough you are going to face against an endless horde of enemies that are increasingly tough and fast. The game becomes more challenging the more you play. But how does the game know when to get up the difficulty? Let's take a look at the code. And here it is. I actually have two separate event groups to manage the difficulty. This first group is all about enemy spawn times and what kind of enemy you see on screen at any given time. For example, when the game starts, we have the difficulty set to zero, which means we will only see the basic enemies. Then, after a while, the difficulty changes to one and we introduce new type of enemies that make things more challenging to the player. I also have this little trick here where I spawn the same enemy but with a different skin. That is helpful to keep the difficulty in check but at the same time give some variety to the game. After that we just need to repeat the process as much as we want and depending on what value we have on the difficulty we can tell the game what enemy to spawn and at what rate. Like you can see all of this is possible thanks to variables. Now you might be wondering how does the game know when to increase the difficulty? That is handled with the next group. Here we have another variable called timer. That basically counts how long the player has been playing. When the time gets to 25 seconds, we up the difficulty one point. Then after 15 seconds, we increase it another point. In that way, every 25 seconds, the game get more complicated and based on what you programmed in the previous event group, the game can alter the type of enemies and rates. With this basic trick, you could even program special events like a bonus stage where you give coins to the player for surviving long enough, or even creating a boss encounter. Using timers and variables is a perfect and easy way to control how players make progress in the game especially on an endless type of game like this where you don't have different levels to challenge players. You just have to think about the roadmap you want for the player based on the time they spend in the game. Easy, right? I think that pretty much sums up all the different features we have in Ghost Ship Panic. I hope these tutorials give you an idea of the design process behind Ghost Ship Panic and hopefully will give you some ideas to implement in your next game. If there's anything else in the game you want me to focus on, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to make another video about it. I want to show you all the cool features Construct 3 has for us and all the cool things we can do with them. Remember to subscribe if you find this video useful, that would help the channel grow. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.